Hello, this is a very quick and simple introduction to the very basics of using Audacity. I want to cover recording into Audacity. I want to cover some very simple editing and getting some things like music into it. So here I already have the program installed. If you want more details, you could always go to Audacity's website. They have this great page on mixing and narration with background music. You can Google that and read much more details, much more professional than I'm going to do. What I'm going to do first is make sure that I have already plugged in my microphone. That's really important. I, Audacity, um, if I plug the mic in after I open it, sometimes it gets a little messed up. So I'm going to plug it in and then open the program. When I do that, I can click this little thing here to choose the mic I want. You can see that uh, my computer is like, well, I don't know, you probably want to record out of the mic that's built into the computer, right? And I'm like, no, I want to use this microphone here, the one that sounds a little bit better. So if you are plugging a microphone and make sure you pick the right thing. Now that I've picked the microphone that I want to use, assuming I plugged one in, maybe I just want to use the one that's already built into the computer, um, what I like to do is do a quick little test to make sure the volume is right. I usually do that just by clicking in here, right above the mic area. Um, when I click it, it'll start showing me in live, real time, a, a visual representation of this. Um, if it looks like super hot, super loud, I'll adjust it with this little guy. I'll move it down a little bit. I, I can't do that right now because I'm using the same microphone for recording this video. So who knows um, what would happen. But I would, I would go up and down. Um, if I start recording, like say by hitting the record button, and if these peaks that you're seeing look really, really tall, if they're if they're cracking the top and bottom there, like it just did there, then I'm probably going to go back and make them a little bit smaller because uh, in in reality, that that sound, it's called clipping, the sound of my volume being so loud that it hits the top uh, will, will make a little bit of distortion. It's usually not a very pleasant sound for readers. This is just a test, so let's just use it. Well, here I am recording. Did you see how easy that was, by the way? I plugged in a mic, I opened the, the program. If I want, I kind of adjust the volume a little bit. I hit record and bam, I'm doing this in real time. Now, the the obvious thing is that when I want to stop, I can stop. Okay, great. Now I have this whole thing here. If I want to if I want to see the whole thing at once, I, I can do this um, view fit in window. And now I can see by seconds, 5, 10, 50, 20. You know, I just did about a 40 second video. Um, I have a few options here that are really pretty simple. I, I'm talking about a situation here where you might want to work in some music. So um, before I get music in here, I want to make my volume a little bit more even. Um, you see how in parts of it where I got quieter, it didn't go up much at all. And at times where I was louder, it was kind of up here really big. So I like to do something called compression. Now, if I hit control A, it'll select the whole thing. I could also do that just by clicking the track. And you see it's, it's a little darker. That's It's kind of like highlighting words in Word. I'm saying, hey, I want to do something to everything I just selected. Um, if, if I want, I can also choose the selection tool up here and kind of select different parts. But I want to I want to do something to this whole thing. I want to compress this whole bit. So I'm going to select the whole thing, go to effects, go to compressor. Now, compressor might be a weird term for you. You might not be used to it. Um, you might see a whole lot of scary things here. Well, if, if you want more details about ideal ways to adjust this, um, you remember that, that page I talked here. It, it kind of has some suggested things. A lot of times, I just leave it as default. That'll... Uh, it'll, um, default to the thing I did last time. I'm just going to hit OK and show you what happens. Watch the visual representation. All of a sudden, it's a little more even. That part that was a little quieter there is a little louder. The part that was really loud sometimes is even a little bit quieter, and the whole thing sounds a little more even toned. Well, that's great. That means that I can put music underneath it and not be worried about the places I was talking quieter being really quiet. OK, it's a, it's a really simple, really easy little thing to do. Select all, compress. Now, what I want to do is get some music or some sound effects or something in here. So what I'm going to do is go to some place where I have some music. Well, here's um, a, a weird piece. I'm, I'm going to drag this file into my Audacity program. And you see what, what happened is it literally dragged it in as a whole separate track underneath it. This is everything I just did. Remember a second ago we were kind of zoomed in a little bit more, so it took up more of the whole screen. But... Um, now this new track is playing underneath. So if I hit play, you would hear the things I said, and at the exact simultaneous moment, you know, like say at 15 seconds, you would hear that track underneath it. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm I'm doing control and holding the roller ball and the mouse. That kind of zooms me in and out. I, I like that a lot. Um, you can see that this audio track is way longer than 
my 40 seconds of talking. So I probably don't want the whole thing. I probably want to cut something. I might want to cut something of my narration. I might want to, might want to cut something of this audio too. So let's let's do it one at a time. Let's say um, I only want that first 40 seconds of the music, assuming that that's exactly the part I want. I'm going to highlight it. Um, I can only do that because I chose the select tool here first. I'm going to highlight what I want. And when I've highlighted, I'm just going to hit the delete button on the keyboard. Bam, it's gone. Wow, how easy and simple. Um, now again, to make it easier, I can kind of zoom in and out, remember with my, my control rollerball thing. Um, okay, so now here's my talking, here's this part. Now I might still have parts up here where I'm like, oh, I really want to, to um, delete this part. Maybe this is all a mistake. Same thing, right? I can highlight, I can hit delete. I can do that however much I want. Um, now say that the music really starts getting really good right here at about this 20 second moment. And I'm like, oh, I really wish my audience could kind of hear some of that music right there. Well, what I like to do is split the track. I, so I put my cursor where I want it to go and then I can go to edit, um, clip boundaries and split. You see it also tells you control I will do it. I use control I so much more. Watch what happens when I hit that split. Well, barely anything. You can see there's a little bit of a line now between this. That means that I'm going to zoom in. Um, you can see the stuff on one side is different than the stuff on the other side. Now, if I want to accentuate that, if I want to make that a little clearer, I'm going to click up here to these tools and I'm going to click this one that's the time shift tool. That essentially means I can drag stuff around. Let me let me show you what happens when I drag um, when I when I try to click and drag on this bottom track with the time shift tool. The whole thing moves. Now I can't. I can't select things the way I used to, right? If I want to select something, I have to go back to the select tool, highlight it. But if I want to move it around, I click time shift tool. Now I can move stuff. Well, you see how this whole track is moving. Well, I just split this top track. So now I can move it in different uh, places. Does that make sense? That they, they get dragged separately. They're, they're thought of as whole different clips. And that can be really useful when I'm trying to time my words with my music. If I'm like, oh, there's this really interesting part of music. I want it to come right there. And there'd be a little bit of silence in my words as it, as it comes back in. That can be really, really sweet, right? Okay. So, so that's easy enough, right? We're, we're splitting tracks with control I or edit clip boundary split. We're moving them around using the time shift tool. Okay. So now this might be almost really good. This almost be, might be worth me uh, exporting and, and letting other people listen to, except my volume probably isn't leveled out. For instance, this, remember volume is a, is a feature of how up and down it is, how close it is to the top. This looks kind of loud in relation to my talking, which also is about the same loud. I probably want the music a little bit quieter. Now there's a few different ways to do that. I'm gonna show you the way I like to. I like to use this envelope tool. I'm gonna to click that and you see the second I clicked it, all of a sudden things look a little different here. It's like, what's going on? What I do is I, is I click at a point in a track and you see what it did is it made this itty bitty little um, dot there. After I click there, I can adjust the volume of the things before that and after it. Uh, so I clicked that, so now that's kind of like a, a, a pivot. Now I'm gonna click um, in a space before it and watch what happens, I can kind of manually adjust everything before and after that pivot. And remember, smaller means quieter. So what I'm doing here is I can make another pivot here. I can make this part in the middle kind of louder if I want. So it feels a little bit more accentuated, remember, because the speaking stopped at that moment. And then when I start talking again, I can drag another one and everything after that pivot point will get quieter. I can, you know, you can, and you can see I can kind of use it to fade a little bit to make it a little more interesting. If I'm like, oh, that's still too loud, well, I, again, I'll just drag it again and kind of even that out. Um, this is a lot of playing around. I, I know it kind of looks weird here, but I, in real life, I'm, I'm constantly um, playing back the whole time to hear what it sounds like. Um, the easiest way to do that is to just click this top bar. So if I'm like, I want to hear what it sounds like starting right here, you click the start that bar and it'll start playing back right at that moment. Now you, you can't hear it because of uh, the, the setup on my computer right now, but it, um, I swear it, it's there, it's playing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, is that the, quiet enough? I hit play, uh, no, I'll make it a little quieter. And I come back and I grab that and make it a little louder, whatever. Now remember, if I want to select something, I gotta go back to that select tool. I can still go back, um, select things on one track, on either track. You remember, click there to select the whole thing. And I, and I could still do various effects to it even after I've done that, um, it's called the, the envelope tool. Remember, I, I kind of think of it as, as the, the adjust the volume tool. Uh, but that's that's the 
the most basic things I find myself doing all the time. I record, I compress, I split, I move, and I adjust the volume with envelope. Okay, let's say this is perfect. Let's say it's exactly how I want. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the uh, fit in window, control F, just to kind of see the whole thing here. So I know now that I'm gonna have one audio track where the music keeps going after the voice ends. It's about 50 seconds long. Say that's fine, great. Well, there's two different ways to save in Audacity. If I hit File, Save Project As, I'm saving this whole project as an AUP file, which only Audacity can open. I'm, I'm essentially saving this as something that I can come back to later. So if I'm like, call this like test for video, then I can, I can save this, walk away, and come back, but I can't email that test for video .aup file to someone. They they can't open it up and be like, oh, I'm like grooving to this cool thing you made. No, it's it's not listenable by them yet. I need to export this first into an audio file that can be shared. So that's actually not that hard. I'm going to go to file and export. You notice export is different than save, right? That that word is on purpose. Export means I'm going to make this so someone else can listen. Now. I'm gonna have some choices. The first option here is .wave. Now that's gonna sound like really good quality, but it's also gonna be this mega huge file that's gonna be hard for me to share with anyone. And if you're doing this for my class, you might have to upload this file somewhere that doesn't let you have too many file, uh, that, that might not let you upload a, a really, really huge file. So. I'm gonna click the save as type and pick one of these. Um, often I choose Aug Vorbis. You might not have heard of that. It's kind of an alternative uh, version of MP3, but um, you might have obviously heard of an MP3 too. Let's let's just try uh, let's try the the MP3 one and kind of see what happens. Um, I'm gonna go go back and put it on the desktop. I'm just gonna call it test for video again. Now you do see it gives me some options you could play around with. It's always worth seeing. Um, I, I think of uh, the the bigger this number, the better it's going to sound. Even a 320 kpbs is isn't going to sound uh, it isn't going to be the hugest file. It's still going to be much smaller than that wave. So I might as well pick the big one. I'm going to leave the rest of that. Hit OK. Now when I hit save, it's going to be like, hey, wait, wait, wait. These are all going to be mixed down to two stereo. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. Now it automatically here is filling in some of this info with the info of the song I imported. Well. That's that's not right. I don't want when someone plays my new MP3 file in in iTunes or something. I don't want it to say, "Oh, this is a track by Combustible Edison." It's called Vertigo. Well, no, it's not. This is a track by me. So I'm gonna hit clear, clear all that out, fill some stuff in here that works. Um, you know, track title is test for video. If you don't have an album title or a track number or whatever, that's fine. I sometimes I think it's kind of cool to keep track of the stuff. I don't know. I I do like audio test it and so then later on if I'm like man where's that audio test and I have uh, some program open that I'm that I'm using to listen to music I use Winamp I can search Winamp for the genre audio testing oh there it is add comments if you want whatever, whatever. leave the rest of this hit OK it's going to think about it bam I have my file now so wherever it is I saved that mp3 file and I can now share that with other people that's it. It's really that easy. I know it looks like it wasn't that easy, but I swear it is. Get in there and play around. Give it a shot. Bye.